Hi, I'm Sharon Chen, and today we're going to paint this little canvas of some birch or aspen trees, and they're colored with fall foliage. And we're doing this on a 9 by 12 stretched canvas, and I'm using the DecoArt Americana Premium Acrylics. We're going to start out with some extender medium, and I'm going to just put a little chocolate chip size pile on the canvas and I'm using a, a large bristle brush. It's about three quarter inch. And I'm just going to brush this out in a smooth even coat over this canvas. The um, extender medium will keep your acrylic paint wet for a little longer than if you put it on a dry canvas. And this will give you time to blend this background that we're going to use as the base for our painting. So just keep brushing it out back and forth in different directions so you get that extender smoothed out in a, an even coat and you want to get it down into the grooves of the canvas and if you feel like it's getting a little too stretched just add a little bit more. So I'm putting another little dot here and kind of finish smoothing this out. We're going to put a few colors out on our palette. Cadmium, cadmium orange, yellow green, primary cyan, Cadmium Red, and Cadmium Yellow. I'm going to continue using our, our big bristle brush. You can wipe some of the extender out of it and pick up some of the cyan blue. That will be our sky color. And I'm going to start working that near the top and down the corner a little bit just where I want some sky peeking through the trees. I'm going to move down and pick up some of the yellow on my brush and when you can see when you mix the yellow and the blue together you're going to get a green color. You just want to work this in a soft crisscross motion just to start softening these colors together. You know, wipe your brush off often if you start getting too much of one color or the other. You don't want these to get too muddy. So I'm picking up some more yellow. I'm going to work it down here in the center where a lot of our foliage is going to be. Pick up some of the orange and start blending that back into the yellow. You're going to see a lot of brush strokes right now, but when we get closer to the end, we'll use a big mop brush and soften these brush strokes out. So here I'm picking more, more red up, and when I have less yellow in the brush and more red, it gets a, a deeper red color. You get more of that crimson. So again, you know, you want to wipe your brush. Pinch it out on a paper towel every once in a while to get that excess paint out. I don't want to work this red up into that green area too much because since green and red are complements, they'll tone each other down and you'll get more of a brown color. So that's, that's why I want to keep wiping my brush and just softly blending these. So you have, here where you wipe them together you're going to get a little bit more of a brown which is okay because there's a lot of brown colors in a wood scene. Add some more yellow down here at the bottom. And each time you do this, this is going to look different. It's not going to come out the same every time. And if you want to vary your colors a little bit, feel free to do that. 
If you want this to be more yellow, put in less of the red and green. If you want it to be more red, don't add as much green and yellow. You want to work around the sides of your canvas if you're using a wrapped canvas. You can always frame it, but sometimes it's nice to just go ahead and finish these edges so that if you don't want to put a frame on it there, have a tone on them so that they blend into the color of the front of the canvas. So now I'm just going to keep working this out and filling in these bare spots on the canvas. This is going to be all these nice bright fall colors. You can see with this extender, this paint is still very pliable. You can still keep blending it together, almost like an oil paint. This gives your paint a lot more open time to blend. You have a little green down here on the bottom because we're going to have some ground foliage near the bottom of the canvas. So just keep working and blending these colors. You know, if you need to add more in some spots, um, pick some up and add it where you want to adjust the color a little bit. And just keep blending it out till you're satisfied with the, the distribution of colors. Still looks kind of splotchy at this point, so I'm going to take a big mop brush and I'm going to start tapping this wet paint. And you'll see as I tap, 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 it starts softening those brush strokes and it evens everything out. You want to wipe your brush, the mop brush off every little bit, you know, on a clean paper towel because it'll be picking up this wet paint you don't want to keep redistributing the color but just keep tapping and pushing it's just a little pouncing motion and you can see how these um, brush strokes start disappearing and blending together so you're going to go over the whole canvas this way So you can hear it, see a little spot here where I've not wiped my brush and I'm getting a little bit of that green paint transferred down here to the middle. So I'm just softening that out. That's why it's important to keep wiping your brush on a clean paper towel. Of course, this is a work in prog progress. And as I was softening the canvas, I decided that I really need to put some dark color down here near the bottom to be like the ground or horizon line. So I've come back in while the paint's still wet and I'm working some of the, the blue down here near the bottom to give a darker base where the tree 
trees trunks are going to come down and be planted so this sort of the ground use a little bit of the blue some green just just darken this area and you can see again my paint's still wet so it's it's very easy to work this and blend it into the the paint that's already on there so it's just kind of a about maybe two two inches or so at the bottom smooth everything out and then you'll let it dry it'll take longer with the extender in the paint to dry so you can just wait it out let it dry overnight or you can speed it up with a hair dryer for this demo I did use a hair dryer and I found that I had to dry it for a pretty long time and you could tell when it start getting dry because the surface lost the shininess and would become more matte looking so I check real carefully as I was drying to make see where I still had shiny spots on the canvas and as those shiny spots became a, a matte finish I knew it was drying okay your background should be dry now and you've transferred some guidelines for tree trunks and you don't have to transfer all of them you could just do the the large ones if you want and freehand and the smaller ones and I am just using white paint and I'm using a flat bris bristle brush and loading it and just pulling placing the end of the brush against the edge of the tree trunk and just pulling towards the center just pulling a little probably a little over halfway across and just move down that trunk and this way you can quickly fill in the tree trunk you can use a, a larger brush probably should be using like the three-quarter inch this would go faster but it's okay to have some of this little texture because um, that will add to your aspen trees because they're kind of a, a paper papery type bark that splits and peels and we're going to have a lot of little cross um, shadows and dark spots that we'll add later where the the bark's peeled off but these these white tree trunks are going to be very graphic and stand out really well against this bright background so just go along and fill in your tree trunks and once you get down one side you're gonna you can flip the canvas over and work down the opposite side to fill the whole tree trunk in Here, just flip over and work in from the opposite direction. My workspace is always a mess. I barely have room to put a canvas. Here we are coming up the opposite side of the trunk and you can see Doing this in a horizontal stroke gives you some texture to this tree trunk that will just add to the, um, the look of these birch trees. I'm not going to run this video through the whole thing. I don't think you want to watch me paint every one of these trees in, but we'll do a, a couple here and then I'll fast forward and show you what it looks like with a lot of the tree trunks in. You want some big major ones uh, and you want some little thin ones because there's if you look at these aspen groves there's so many trees in them and they're just packed in together. We did a trip out to Yellowstone 
this past summer and there were a lot of these aspen groves through the parks out there. I'm going to switch to this larger three-quarter inch brush and another thing I did want to mention is it's good to add some water to this white paint. You want it to just kind of flow off the brush. If you leave it just as it is out of the tube it's a little bit stiff and may take a little more work filling these in but if you add it mix some water into it so that it, it just gets to a real creamy consistency I think you'll have an easier time painting the tree trunks. And you can see moving to this bigger brush, the, the three quarter inch makes it go a lot faster. These little skinny trees, you can just kind of touch the brush down. You don't even have to pull much. And I'm just, just freehanding these in, trying to add them in a kind of an irregular pattern. You want several large trees and then a lot of little filler skinny trees. And when you get down to the smallest filler trees, you can just use a like a number four round brush and pull these in. You don't want them quite as stark white as the other ones because they're further in the background and so they're going to look a little bit softer. So again just add a lot of water to your paint and stroke these little background filler trees in. As you're putting these little trees into, be sure to bury where the trunks hit the ground. You don't want them all in an even line across, so stagger where they're planted into the ground. So you can see we have some that come down almost to the end of the canvas, and some then that start back at the horizon line.
Now that all the trees are in, we're going to start putting some detail on them. The first thing is to add some shadows. And so I'm mixing up um, a light lavender color using some blue, some red, and the white. And you can vary how light or dark this is. And I'm using the little um, bristle brush. It's probably about a 3 8 inch flat. And I'm just going to scuff some of the shadow color on the right side of the tree trunks. And just, just vary this a little bit. You can add a little more blue or a little more red depending on on what color. Here I'm going to pick up a little green and just, I just want some variation to pick up some of these background colors and add them into the shadows on these tree trunks. So you're just going to go through and just quickly do all of them. It shouldn't take too long. This isn't anything but real precise. You want to vary the color of these shadows a little bit. Um, picked up a little bit of orange this time, which is toning down and giving you a, a more brownish color to add some of the shadows. So you're going to go ahead and just fill in the remaining shadows on all these trees. And again, just vary the colors a little bit here and there. So here we are with all the shadows put in, and we're going to now add some highlights to the, the left side of the trees. And I'm using a mix of white and yellow to give just a, a yellow glow to the, the left side, kind of um, the sunshine shining through. Our light source is going to be just a little left of center. The next step is to start adding our little shadows for the, the bark. These are all the little cracks and peels in the bark and you know, our little branches that are going to come off from the sides of the tree. So I'm using a round, like a number four brush in black and just scuffing in some of these little black cracks or rings around the tree and then pulling little branches out. And most of these branches are sort of straight but kind of angled upward a little bit. So here, just kind of working on the tip of my brush and just dragging a little bit of this black to add these little crack shadows. And again, this is something you can add as few or as many as you like. If you look at the, the real aspen groves, some trees have are just almost dark with all these little cracks, and others have more wider expanses of white bark that hasn't cracked yet. So there's no real right or wrong way to do this. You know, when you put these little lines across, they're just curved, just barely in a kind of like a little smile. And that will give you some contour to your 
trunks. Give them a rounded look. Make some very light and make some a little bit heavier. And if your paint seems a little stiff, just add brush mix some water into the black so it flows off your brush more easily. Some of the lines can start on the right side of the tree, some can start from the left. Some can just be middle, so you just want these varied as you move up and down the tree. Pull your little branches out with the tip of your brush. You can let some come across the other trees. And they're relatively straight. You can add some just little crooks in the branches just so they're not perfectly straight little sticks. Just waver your brush just a little bit. Here we've got a lot more finished and as you work to these back trees, the, the smaller filler trees, these lines are going to be a lot less distinct. They're just a little suggestion of shadows on these back trees. You can add a little bit of white into the black to make it more gray and that'll soften it down also. So they're not as prominent on these back filler trees. You can see I'm just kind of dabbing and touching as I work down the tree. When you make your little branches coming out of these background trees, you also want to make them more of the, the lighter gray color so they're not so prominent so they fade into the background. So I've mixed a little bit of white into the black for a soft gray color. So you can finish up your shadows and your branches and then we'll move on to the next phase which will be starting to add foliage to the design.